a summer cold. Yes, uh, we're, 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 we're swimming upstream today. Oh uh, my God. We're getting uh, uh, kinds of technical glitches. My cell phone won't work for some reason. So I'm doing this on my computer, which I've never done before. And so the quality of the picture is not that great. And I can't stop sneezing. And she's sneezing. Uh, and so this could be a unique <laughs> moment in the history of the theater. So welcome to... Hmm. I think we're going to have to go without the sound. Never without the sound. Welcome to... Quarantine Theater. theater. And uh, today we're going to be doing uh, a reading of, it's actually fully play we're going to do in several parts because we started reading it and we said, oh, this is so I much like fun. Uh, the play is Love Letters by A.R. Gurney, which many of you perhaps know. It's often done as a fundraiser. It's a play intended to be read by two actors. And it's basically love letters between Melissa and Andy from when they're in second grade until, well, we won't tell you the ending, hmm. but we're going to do by the first 10 pages today <clears throat> and uh, see how many episodes of quarantine theater this will occupy. And hopefully you can stay with us. We'll see. And we have, uh, we both have histories of just of doing this Yes. for our fundraising, different fundraising events with crazy, crazy stories. Well, Maybe we'll tell those next week. Well, we'll tell, we'll tell yours at the end of today's reading. Okay. Because that's it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> For whatever reason. <clears throat> so here we go. Love Letters by A.R. Gurney. Part one. Andrew Makepeace Ladd III accepts with pleasure the kind invitation of Mr. and Mrs. Gilbert Channing Gardner for a birthday party in honor of their daughter, Melissa, on April 19th, 1937, uh, at half past three o'clock. Dear Andy, thank you for the birthday present. I have a lot of Oz books, but not the, lo the Lost Princess of Oz. What made you give me that one? Sincerely yours, Melissa. I'm answering your letter about the book. When you came into second grade with that stuck up nurse, you look like a lost princess. I don't believe what you wrote. I think my mother told you, your mother, to get that book. I like the pictures more than the words. Now let's stop writing letters. I will make my L's taller than my D's. I will close up my A's and my M's and my O's. And I will try to make longer P's. You're Pass funny. it on. You're funny. <laughs> <laughs> will you be my Valentine? Were you the one who sent me a valentine saying, will you be my valentine? Yes, I sent it. Then I will be. Unless I have to kiss you. When it's warmer up, can I come over to you, your house and swim in your pool? No, you can't. I have a new nurse named Miss Hawthorne who thinks you'll give me infantile paralysis. Uh, will you help me go down and get the milk and the cookies during recess? I will, if you don't ask me to marry you again. I will, I will not, not write, write personal, personal notes, notes in class. class. I will not write personal notes in class. I will not. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Love, Andy Ladd. I made this card myself. It's not Santa Claus. It's a kangaroo jumping over a glass of orange juice. <laughs> Do you like it? I like you, Melissa. <clears throat> My mother says I have to apologize in writing. I apologize for sneaking into the girls' bathhouse when you were changing into your bathing suit. Tell Miss Hawthorne I apologize to her, too. Here is a picture I drew of you and me without our bathing suits on. Guess which one is you. Don't show this to anyone. I love you. Here's a picture of Miss Hawthorne without her bathing suit on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you can't draw very well, can you? Thank you for sending me the cactus plant stuck with a little donkey. I've gotten lots of presents here in the hospital, and I have to write thank you notes for every one. I hate it here, and my throat is sore all the time for where they <clears throat> cut my tonsils out, and they give me lots of ice cream, but they also take my temperature the wrong way. 
Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Why did they send you to another school this year? Merry Christmas. They think I should be with all boys. He made me promise to send you a postcard. This is it. You're supposed to write a personal note on the back of a postcard. For example, uh, here are some questions to help you think of things you might want to say. Do you like Lake Saranac? Is it fun visiting your grandmother? Are your parents really getting divorced? Can you swim out in the deep part of the lake or does Miss Hawthorne make you stay in a shallow part where it's all roped off? Uh, is there anybody there my age? I mean, boys? Please write answers to all these questions. No, no, yes, no, no. Hmm. Dear Melissa, remember me, <clears throat> Andy Ladd? They've sent me to camp so I can be with all boys again. This is quiet hour, so we have to write home. But I've already done that, so I'm writing you. There's a real Indian here named Iron Crow who takes us on nature walks to teach us six new plants a day. This is okay, except you forgot about poison ivy. I won the backstroke, which gives me two and a half gold stars. If I get over 50 gold stars by Parents' Day, then I win a leadership prize, which is what my father expects of me. I'm making a napkin ring and shop, <clears throat> which is worth four stars, and which is either for my mother or for you. I hope you write back because when the mail comes every morning, they shout out your name, and it'd be nice to walk up and get a letter from a girl. Help! Eek! Yipes! I can't write letters. It took me hours just to write, Dear Andy. I write my father because I miss him so much. But to write to a boy? Hell's bells and oriental smells. I'm sending you this picture I drew of our cat instead. Don't you love his expression? <clears throat> it's not quite right, but I tried three times. I drew those jiggly lines around his tail because sometimes the sail tail behaves like a completely separate person. I love that tail. There's a part of me that feels like that tail. Oh, and here's some bad news. My mother's gotten married again to a man named Hooper McPhail. Help! Let me out of here! I like the cat. Is that the cat you threw in the pool that time when we were playing at your home back in the third grade? No. <clears throat> that was a different cat entirely. This is a dumb <laughs> Halloween card that wouldn't scare anyone. God bless you. But I'm uh, <clears throat> writing about dancing school. My parents say I have to go to this this dancing school this year, but I don't see why I have to. I can't figure out why they keep sending us away from girls and then telling us we have to be with them. Are you going to dancing school also? Yeah. Just write yes or no. Yes. Just... Dear Mrs. McPhail, I want to apologize to you for my behavior in the back of your car coming home last night from dancing school. Charlie and I were just goofing around and I <clears> guess it <throat> just got out of hand. I, I'm sorry you had to pull over to the curb, and I'm sorry we tore Melissa's dress. My father says that you should send me the bill, and I'll pay for it out of my allowance. Dear Andy, <clears throat> Mommy brought your letter up here to Lake Placid. She thought it was cute. I thought it was dumb. I could tell your father made you write it. You and I both know <clears throat> that the fight in the car was really Charlie's fault. And Charlie never apologized, thank God. That's why I like him, actually. Uh -oh. As for you, you shouldn't always do what your parents want, Andy. Even at dancing school, you're always doing just the right thing all the time. You're a victim of your parents sometimes. That's why I picked Charlie <clears throat> to do the rumble with me that one time. He at least hacks around occasionally. I'm enclosing a picture I drew of a dancing bear on a chain. That's you, Andy. Sometimes I swear. I know it seems jerky, but I like writing, actually. I like writing compositions in English class.
I like writing letters. I like <clears throat> writing you. I wanted to write that letter to your mother because I knew you'd see it. And so it was like talking to you when you weren't there. And when you couldn't interrupt, hint, hint. My father says everyone should write letters as much as they can. It's a dying art. He says letters are a way of presenting yourself in the best possible light to another person. I think that too. I think you sound too much like your father. But I'm not going to argue by mail. And anyway, the skiing's too good. Get well soon. I'm sorry <clears throat> you broke your leg. Mommy says I broke it purposely because I'm a self-destructive person and went down White Face Mountain without asking permission. All I know is I wish I had broken my arm instead, so I'd have a good excuse not to write letters. I'm enclosing a picture I drew of the bedpan. I'm serious. Don't you love its shape? Andrew M. Ladd III accepts with <clears throat> pleasure the kind invitation of Mrs. R. Ferguson Brown for dinner in honor of her granddaughter, Melissa Gardner, before the children's charity ball. I'm writing this letter because I'm scared if I call you up, I'd start crying right on the telephone. I'm really mad at you, Andy. <clears throat> Don't you know that when you're invited to a dinner before a dance, you're supposed to dance with the person giving it at least twice? Oh, oh, oh. And I don't mean my grandmother either. That's why they give dinner parties, so people get danced with. I noticed you danced with Ginny Waters, but you never danced with me once. I just think it's rude, that's all. Straighten up and fly right, Andy. How do you expect to get anywhere in life if you're rude to women? Nuts to you, Andy. And that goes double on Sunday. I didn't dance with you because I got a stretched groin. Mm -hmm. if, you know what, you know, if you don't know what that means, now look it up sometime. I was going to tell you in person, but I got embarrassed. I stretched it playing hockey last week. The only reason I danced with Ginny Waters is that she takes tiny steps. But you always make me do those long, big spins. And we could have gotten into some serious trouble. I tried it out at home with my mother first. And it hurt like hell. <clears throat> That's why I didn't dance with you. I'm using a heating pad now, and maybe we can dance next week at the junior assemblies? I don't believe that hockey stuff. I think Ginny Waters <clears throat> stretched your groin, and next time you cut in, I'm going to stretch the other one. Huh? You obviously don't know what a groin is. You obviously don't know what a joke is. <sighs> Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year. Guess what? I'm going to a psychiatrist now. My mother says it will do me a world of good. Don't tell anyone, though. It's supposed to be a big secret. Hmm. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I have a question. And would you please write the answer by mail? Because sometimes when you call, my mother listens on the telephone. And when she doesn't, my little brother does. Here's the question. Do you talk about sex with a psychiatrist? I talk about sex all the time. It's terribly expensive, but I think it's worth it. If I went to a psychiatrist, I'd talk about you. Seriously, I would. I think you're, I think about you quite often. Sometimes I think you dislike me because I'm richer than you are. Sometimes <clears throat> I really have this feeling. I think you like the pool and the elevator in my grandmother's house and Simpson in his butler's coat coming in with ginger ale and cookies on a silver tray. I think you like all that stuff just as much as you like me. All I know is my mother keeps saying you'd make a good match. She says, if I ever married you, I'd be set up for life. But I think it's really just a physical attraction. That's why I like going into the elevator with you at your grandmother's that time. Want to try it again? Help! Let me out of here! They shipped me off to this nunnery. It's the end of the absolute world. We have to wear these sappy midi blouses and learn posture in gym and speak French and out loud in class. Aidez-moi, mon chevalier. Oh, God, it's crappy here.
All the girls squeal and shriek, and you can hear them barfing in the bathroom after the evening meal. We can only go to Hartford one day a week if we find a chaperone and there are only two dances with boys a year. And if we're caught drinking even beer, it's wham bam onto the next train and home, which is worse. Can you come visit me some Sunday afternoon? We can invite boys to tea from four to six. There are all of these biddies sitting around, keeping watch, but if the weather's good, we could walk up and down the driveway before we have to sign in for evening prayers. They've made me room with this fat, spoiled Cuban bitch who has nine pairs of shoes and all she does is lie in her bed and listen to Finian's rainbow. How are things in Glockamora? Gives a shit how things are there. It's here where they're miserable. The walls of this cell are puke green, and you can't pick anything up except school banners and pictures of your stupid family. What family? Am I supposed to sit and look at a picture of Hooper McPhail? Come save me, Andy! Or at least write so I can hear a boy's voice even on paper. I just got your letter. <clears throat> They've shipped me off too. Last minute decision. Your mother told my mother it would, be, it would do me good. She said I was a diamond in the rough. I'll write as soon as I'm smoother. Dear Diamond, you too. Oh, I give up. Why don't they keep pushing? Why do they keep pushing us together and then pulling us apart? I think we're all being brought up by a bunch of foolish farts. Now we'll have to write letters, which I hate, but don't let them smooth you out, Andy. I like the rough parts. In fact, sometimes I think you ought to be a little tougher. Love me. All right. That's love letters part one. This is from second grade, just about up to high school. <clears throat> I hope you liked it. Uh, let us know, and we'll keep reading from it. And we might, we'll be healthy we, by next week. She'll be sneezing <laughs> less, I think, by next week. Um, so uh, do we have anything else to say? Um, no. <clears throat> right. Well, I hope I'm able to publish stay well. this. Yes, Don't stay well. Don't get this cold. Stay safe. And I'm trying to figure out if I can make this happen, but I may not. So uh, you may never see this. So I'm fine we were talking. I don't know. All right. Why? So, what do you mean? Because this is on, on, on the computer. Not that, I don't even know how to turn uh, it. I don't even know how to turn it off. Let me see here. I think I'm going to try this button here. Let's see. Goodbye, everybody. Okay. <clears throat>